Hey, folks, welcome back to Money and Politics. Great to have you back. And uh, tonight we are going to be talking about something a little different than humble, but we're going to be talking about humble, too. Number one, uh, I, as I say, love the feedback that I get from you, and that's basically what we're going to be talking about tonight. If you want to email me, there's the email. Uh, if you want to, of course, some people uh, are DMing me. If you want to follow me on Twitter, there's my Twitter. And if you can send me a direct message. And to that end, I've had a couple of direct messages going back uh, and forth with uh, a couple of you. Uh, and I'm, as you know, I've, I've said that I can't, I uh, haven't had my head wrapped around NFTs, uh, but I'm getting there. And even though I kind of understand the concept, I, in my own mind, I'm not always uh, sure of the value proposition uh, and and also how it would necessarily make money for Humble. It, it may. What I would say, and we'll come back to that, is in my direct conversations, we're going to be doing an, what I think will be an interesting conversation. We'll do another interview with one of those from our Humble family, but who is more conversant on NFTs. And I hope that that will help to educate you as well as me, uh, where I am on the NFTs at this particular point, subject to change, is that it's kind of like a hammer. A hammer is a tool. A hammer is great for driving in nails, not so good for a whole lot of other things. Uh, and every tool is neither good or bad by itself. It's what's the application. And I can see where NFTs would be great in certain applications and not so good in others. And before I leave this topic, let me just say, and, and pay attention to this, because, you know, when in my lifetime, you get something new and you, you get uh, the internet came out and then web pages came out. And there's always a lot of hype around something that's new. And it's like, oh man, this is so cool. You know, and I think we're at that stage right now on some of this about NFTs. And uh, just it gets to be ridiculous enthusiasm. So I'm often trying to say, look, you know, calm down, calm down. Let's look at this rationally. Let's not get carried away. There might be some cool applications here, but you have to go into this with a bit of logic, okay? So we will do, I think next week, end of next week, uh, a good conversation on NFTs that will come right before, the, probably, probably do it the day before uh, <clears throat> the investor call that we're all looking forward to. Just briefly, in case you missed it, and I don't know how you would, it's on May 7, just after the hour after market closes. You can freeze frame this and there is the agenda or look at the video I did last night and uh, I covered all of that. That's what I talked about. So that said, a lot of people are uh, calling me or not on the phone, but uh, contacting me and are saying, you know, that uh, they wish that I would review one stock or another. And when I almost, almost without fail, these are penny stocks, and frequently, these are ridiculous penny stocks. I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings, it's just some of these are just not something anyone would want to go into, okay? However, I had someone, as you know, I've talked about leverage index funds, and one of our fellows brought to me what I thought was a really very good uh, investment. And it is, uh, it's, it's a, a leveraged uh, micro sectors, FANG, three times leveraged ETN, okay? So what all that means is that it is the symbol FNGU, and it closed today at $33.49. Now, that's not a penny stock. What is it and why should you buy it? Because have you been depressed by humble share price over the last two months? 
And if you have, ladies and gentlemen, I have an answer for you. It's, I, I'm, I'm mocking myself because it sounds like a commercial, doesn't it? Have you been depressed? Uh, look, when we talk about financial diversity, the other thing I would tell you, and how many times have I said learning is more emotional than intellectual? And what happens is a lot of people, and I also said that volatility is good, but you have to be able to ride the emotional waves. And you can tell right now, if you are depressed, as I just said, over humble, a lot of you are having a tough time right now riding the emotional wave of humble being in the gutter when you thought by this time you would be halfway to heaven. And you're not, right? And now you're still like, will we ever get there? Uh, maybe there is no God. Maybe there is no financial God. So you get my point. You're overly depressed because the stock is down. And the answer is to find a bit of diversity that's going to give you something that goes up. So that when you look at your portfolio, you're going to go, well, Humble's down. But I'm really up on this other thing on Fangu. And that's going to give you emotional stability. And so the diversity is not merely financial, it's emotional. So let's take a look at that. When we uh, look at this, Fangu, this is the uh, five-day chart, <clears throat> okay? Now, the thing I'm going to do, and I'll probably have to take myself out. If we go down, this is on the front page. Let me take myself out of here. Uh, if you go down on anything on Yahoo, you can see on the right side, and you see here, top holdings. So this is interesting because this is not a weighted ETX uh, or ETN in this case, but it's not weighted. All of the holdings are 10%. And look at the quality names in here. So you got Alibaba, Alphabet, which is the head uh, of Google, you know, the head. Uh, Amazon, Apple, Baidu, Facebook, Netflix, N NVIDIA, Tesla, and Twitter. All of those are great companies to have. Now, they're not always going to be rowing in sync. Everyone has ups and downs, as we know, with Humble. But with one very reasonable price of $33.50, you can have a stock that is going to give you really good returns. Now, you know, we, we want to use the S&P 500 as the benchmark of performance. And uh, here we have the S&P 500 for one year, okay? Let's put in there one of my very favorite, and I've talked about this before when we talk about this, is three times the NASDAQ, so the T- QQQ. Now, I don't have the exact price of that today, but it's in the neighborhood. I'm going to make this uh, purple, let's say. Uh, the TQQ is in the neighborhood of about $108 or so. Okay, this says about, 100 and, yeah, about 108, 109, somewhere in there. Uh, so here we have, that's what the TQQ has done. Where, where the S&P is up 45% in the last 52 weeks, look at uh, the TQQ three times, right? 227%. Now, let's see what Fangu did, F-N-G-U. So let's go up, we go up to our chart and we're gonna type in F-N-G-U. I, don't know. I wish the default wasn't light blue. You can never see anything. So let's make that a brilliant red. And bang, look at that. Now, two things to note here. Uh, it's up 443% in one year. Now, do you think that you might be able to emotionally handle the ups and downs of Humble if you were holding on to Fangu as well? And if we go to two years... Look at that, 570, I'm going to call it 79%, 579%. It's blowing away the TQQ, which is my favorite. So thank you, and I apologize. I don't have the name of our fellow Humbian, 
There's a new term, huh? Those who are invested in humble, humbians. Um, but thank you for giving me this. And that is a great, great return with great companies. I love this thing, man. Look at that. I don't, I don't uh, know when, when, what the inception was here. Going back five years, I think the thing is it doesn't go back five years. This goes back only about uh, three years or so. So if you go back to in its inception, it's up 600, almost 700%. And it had, as you can see, it came down just like the NASDAQ did. It came down. Uh, and when is this? This is from uh, like February, right? So it was real high in February. Doesn't that sound uh, similar, right? So folks, that's the other thing. In terms of putting things in context, the TQQ is down. Fangu is down, and we know Humble's down, and all from those February highs. So we've seen some recovery on the TQQ and this Fangu. Let me go back to a two-year. Now, I think the other thing I would point out, because for those of you who like a uh, really cheap stock, folks, if your money is going to grow over a two-year time at 600%, my goodness, if you got $300, buy 10 shares. If you don't have $300, God bless you, buy two shares. I mean, if we can continue to have that kind of growth over any period of time, you are going to be making some great money, all right? I didn't even look the thing. It's, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the fee, the annual fee is about 1%. I was trying to see if it had a, uh, it does not have a dividend, but that's right. <clears throat> um, you're going to get some good growth out of here. You're going to be divided by 10 different companies, 10 really solid companies. So when we're buying Humble, and I'm not, you know, I'm not dishing Humble here, but Humble is kind of a, we're, we're swinging for a grand slam on Humble. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've often said that if you're in the S&P, you're going to have a stable portfolio, but you're not going to be able to hit a grand slam with the S&P 500. And I don't think you'll hit a grand slam with uh, uh, Fangu either. But when you look at these rates of return over two years, and again, the blue down at the bottom is the S&P 500. When you look at making 600, almost 600% over two years, that may not be a Grand Slam home run, but it's certainly a good triple or a double. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, here's the other thing I was going to say. This is the, let's look at the chart here uh, a year ago. And if I go back a year ago, May of 2020, and of course the, the market was down then because of the uh, COVID coming out, it was, a, you know, about $7, $6.83. So you could have had, 100 shares a year ago uh, for $700, that today those 100 shares would be $3,300. And that's in one year. And I wish they had the two year here, they don't. But if we go back to, um, well, like I say, uh, actually on March the 1st of last year, and that was again, right, right after we, we started to come down, but it was a, whoops, uh, this was a $4 stock. So you have an eight bagger, as we say, eight times the investment. For every dollar you would have put in in March 1st of last year, your investment would have been worth eight times more today. And as we go forward, we're saying, hold on to your humble. I said this last night, hold on to your humble hold on to it through the end of the year. But if you want to put more money into the market, put some money in Fangu, okay? F-N-G-U, let me bring that up again, just in case you didn't have your pen out. Uh, I this, this has a solid foundation. Everything can go down. And this is the other thing, when we talk about volatility, okay? Let me bring that up. This is volatile. Look at the red line here. That's Fangu. Uh, let me take the uh, TQQ out of here for a minute. 
you can see how relatively stable the S&P 500 is. That's the blue line. So you're not on that roller coaster ride. But what did I say recently? That volatility can be your friend. Volatility can be good as long as it, as long as you don't get shaken out of the tree and fall to the ground. If you can stand the volatility, you can make some good money. And look at this uh, in the last four months, the ups and downs. And if you know that, then you know maybe to take a little off as it goes up, buy more on the dips. This is where you, you know, buy the dips, take, goes up suddenly, take some off the table. Not all, don't get all out because we don't know where the top is. We don't know where the exact bottom is, but you can, you know, it's like breathing in and out, in and out, but you just do it partially. But if you can take the volatility as compared to the S&P 500, you can make some good money. And Fangu, I think, given that list of stocks uh, that I showed you before, um, and let's just real quick bring it up again. You've got starting all 10%. Most of the time you get this, it's weighted. You'll have, you know, one being the predominant investment. In this case, they're all equal. So you got Alibaba, Google, Amazon, Apple, Baidu, Facebook, Netflix, NVIDIA, Tesla, and Twitter. Um, great, great, great suggestion. And I'm so th thankful uh, for that. Uh, and I apologize to the person that sent it to me. I, I'll bring your, uh, bring your name up. Okay. So as I'm taping this, it's... Uh, about 20 to 7, the president's going to be speaking the State of the Union tonight. I am not real uh, thrilled about what this State of the Union, a lot of people aren't. I do cover politics, both federal, I've covered federal and, and uh, the state of Illinois. Uh, one thing where I talk, as I do here, in being financially literate, the thing that I would say to you is, as a nutshell, I'll close with this. As a nutshell, the private sector is always going to use money more efficiently. Their government, to me, is a necessary evil. We have to have law enforcement, fire departments, clean water, you know, electricity, uh, the U.S. Armed Forces. So government does things for us collectively, and we all understand that. But government never uses money as efficiently as the private sector. And just think, if I said, Sally and Bill, go on a go to Chicago for the weekend, I'll pay for everything. I don't care what it costs. Well, if you're on my dime, you're probably going to be ordering the lobster and the, and the good bottle of wine. If you're going up there on your dime, maybe you're eating at McDonald's. When it's your money, you use money more efficiently, and the government never does do that. So when we keep taking money out of the private sector into the public sector, very simply what we're doing is taking money out of the sector of the economy where it is more efficient to move it to a sector that is less efficient. As I've already said, we have to do that collectively for certain reasons, but uh, I would be careful where we're going because all of this, this isn't just political or a political rant of one party over another. What I'm trying to say is I've lived long enough. I've run businesses. I've invested. I've covered Congress. I've been right there on Capitol Hill. Um, so I'm bringing you the benefit of my knowledge to the extent you want to accept it. And I would just say when the other thing that I can really tell you is government is not innovative private sector is. We don't get things like Humble from government. We don't get things like Apple smartphones from government. And you, you know, go on down the line. Uh, innovation comes from the private sector. And somebody like Humble is always going to be using that capital to grow the company, to make more jobs, to get better profit, to share with the shareholders. So when you look at things like uh, the State of the Union and the subsequent debates that we will be having. Keep that in mind, if you will. Maybe I, again, I, I, I call it money and politics because that's what I cover both of these. And I don't mean to turn you off by rubbing your nose in uh, one one 
political party over another, but I do try to bring up some of these uh, issues as they're going to impact your family. That said, once again, I've gone longer than I intended. So have a good evening, everyone. We'll obviously be looking forward to a week from Friday where we'll have the uh, returns with Brian Foote, the investor call. We'll do other things. We'll keep going. And don't forget to give me your uh, give me your suggestions. We'll take a look at them as we did this evening. Until tomorrow night, have a good one.